नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन मार्क्सिस स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पुडेंस इट्स आल्सो कॉल्ड सोशलिस्ट स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पुडेंस बिफोर प्रोसीड टू द टॉपिक्स लेट्स डिस्कस ऑन ऑन मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन हियर इज द क्वेश्चन हु किल किंग वीरेंद्र हियर आर फोर ऑप्शन दीपेंद्र शाह पारस शाह ज्ञानेन्द्र शाह एंड अदर व्हिच ऑप्शन विल यू चूज Even you don't believe Dipendra killed his own father, you have to choose the option A to pass the public service commission exam because authentic document of government of Nepal said that Dipendra Shah killed his father. So truth might be different, but power creates the truth and law confirms it. That's why law is party in the hand of ruling class. Marxist school believe that all other schools are. टाइटल टू अर्ड द ऑपरेशन क्लास एंड बायस टू ऑपरेशन क्लास लॉ इज इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ एक्सप्लोइटेशन बाय हाइव्स टू हाइव नट्स रिच पीपुल कंट्रोल द इकोनॉमी लॉ मीडिया एंड आइडियोलॉजी ट्रूथ इज फॉर्म बाय कंट्रोलिंग लीगल मेकानिजम देयर इज ओन नेपली प्रभाव ठूला चैन साना ऐन व्हाट्स दैट मीन हाइव्स इन ब्लिस एंड हाइव नट्स In distress, law is for the controlling the poor people, not for rich people. Philosopher of the Marxist school are Karl Marx himself, Engels, Lenin, Pushkin, and others. Let's discuss on dialectic materialism. This is the fundamental philosophical idea of Karl Marx. There are three rules of dialectic materialism. Rule number one is unity and struggle of opposite. What that mean? Actually, every discipline there are two opposite things. They always struggle with each other. For example, in math, there is plus and minus. In a machine, action and reaction. In physics, positive and negative charge of electricity. In chemistry, combination and dissociation of atoms. And in social science, there is struggle between haves and have-nots. So the permanent nature of struggle of opposition change is inevitable. So. We said nothing is permanent except change. Here is second rule of dialectic materialism. It said transformation of quantitative to qualitative change. In pure science, if we give temperature to the water, temperature increment of water when reach hundred degrees Celsius, it will change in vapor. In gradual change from sixty to seventy, seventy to eighty degree, the water is liquid. But when it cross the last straw, the hundred degree Celsius, it will transfer into qualitative change. In the same way, in social science, class struggle ultimately result to revolution and change to political system. So the present capitalist system is inevitable to change. Third law of dialectic materialism is negation of negation. Here I put one picture. There is here is seed of maize. One seed of maize is negated by tree of maize, but the tree of maize negated by kernel of maize. In beginning, there is one seed, and after negation of negation, there are many seeds. In the same way, in social science, there was primitive communism in the beginning of human society. Human being lives in tribe in the jungle age. There was no state. There was no law to exploit one group to another, but Primitive communism negated by class-based society or state, and the state will be negated by scientific communism. This is the third law of dialectic materialism. Another important theory of Karl Marx is theory of surplus value. Here is one important question for everyone: Where the wealth or money comes from? Here I put two pictures. In first picture, people are collecting ersa gumba in Himalayan region. Ersa gumba is one important herbal medicine, which also called caterpillar farm. In Himalayan region, we will get the ersa gumba free of cost in nature, but in market it costs one million per kg. But how? How there is in Himalayan region free of cost, and why it is one million per kg in market? The cost of the ersa gumba actually not its original cost. The value or price of the thing is the price of labor attached with it. In nature, there is no human labor attached with ersa gumba, so we we get free of cost. 
but people go there collect it they suffer of cold and they bring to the market because human labor attached with the ersagomba we have to pay for it with this example there is one simple logic who labor hard they should be rich and who don't do anything they should be poor because labor created the wealth but actually in our society there is right opposite why because laborer get only a small portion of wealth what they created as wage and remaining wealth which karl marx termed surplus value exploited by factory owner or land owner or business owner employees who work and generate wealth are poor while employer are rich because of the exploitation of surplus value of employees karl marx implement his dialectic materialism in development of society what he termed historical materialism his fundamental assumption is political system is reflection of mode of production in ancient time while people live in cave or tribe there was no class division their mode of production is hunting wild animal gathering wild fruit with the development of primitive agriculture slave society developed society divided in slave and slave master in feudalism the agriculture modernized and some cottage industry developed the feudalism divided in serf and landlord in capitalism it industrialized and society developed in capitalist and proletariat class next step of capitalism is socialism this is transitional system from capitalism to communism and in scientific communism again there is no law no state no politics as tool of exploitation and oppression and what is the function of law in this society in primitive communism there was no state that's why no law to oppress one class to another in slave society slave master made law to legalize slave trade in feudalism we, land we get from nature but they made law to protect the ownership of landlord upon land in the name of right of property in capitalism law used to ensure the profit of business owner and socialism there is proletariat dictatorship proletariat use law to suppress the anti reactionary forces and again in communism there is no law no state what marxist say whether and away the law marxist believe that basic tenet of modern law is legitimizing exploitation which they called business facilitation but that business is exploitative in nature state and law are temporary phenomena law came with the formation of state law always serve the interest of ruling class law systematize and strengthen the power of ruler that's why law should be eliminated not to develop what marxists say withering away the law here comes our end of discussion thank you all of you for your kind attention feel free to subscribe my channel thank you very much